Gazing towards the horizon, Meave noticed a dark shape outlined against the mantle of snow that lay on the ground. It proved a tower, toppled and broken in pieces. Around it lay the ruins of other buildings, blocks hewn out of basalt rock protruding from the permafrost. That'd be the Clan Vidmar ruins, said Gabor, hollering over the wind. Rich ones had their clan seat here till air tremors turned all into dust. Hundreds of dwarves lived here once, and now, not a living soul. Ah! Uh, help! Save me! On the contrary, there was someone midst the ruins, and said someone was clearly in trouble. Meave ordered her men to find the unfortunate soul. They returned moments later, leading a dwarf whose teeth chattered. They had found him in a ruined building where he'd sought shelter from ghouls. Judging by his appearance, the dwarf had spent the better part of a week there. Marco Vidmar, they call me, he said, patting down unkempt hair that seemed to reach in all directions. I came here seeking a family heirloom. Lost in the tremors and the chaos they caused. I ken the chamber where it ought to be, but, well, beasts made the lair there. I cannot drive them off on my own. But bold warriors like you ought to cut them down in a jiffy. So, will you help? I too have lost my home, estate, said the Queen. So I understand well what you feel. I shall help you recover your heirloom. Call it a win. Mirko Vidmar's face lit up. Though he'd spent a week besieged and eating stale biscuits, and though there was a hoarfrost in his beard, he quickly trotted to the front of the column and led the Lyrian soldiers to the underground chamber. As promised, beasts awaited there. I smell a leak. You mad? Don't shake that! Feel any burning? See a local healer or wise woman. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads.
Her Majesty knows what she's doing. As soon as the fight was done, Mirko Vidmar ran towards a crate that stood on a pedestal, slipping on the now bloody floor. When the dwarf lifted the lid, precious stones spilled out. Your heirloom? This? Asked the queen, rather puzzled. I thought a pipe that belonged to your grandfather more likely. Seems to me Brother Mirko was not wholly candid with us. This here's no heirloom, no family souvenir. It's the treasure trove of Clan Vidmar. We thought it gone for good. Pressed for the truth, Mirko admitted no family sentiment had prompted this expedition. The dwarf had planned to leave Mahakam and start a new life among humans. Yet he did not wish to do so without sizable capital. I can't stand to stay here a moment longer. The days, all of them, they're identical. Rise with the first cockscrow, march in double file to the latrine, crap on command, twelve hours down the shaft and home to sleep. Mirko complained. Want a wifey? Put on an application? In triplicate? Care to snip your beard? Elders got to approve it. You wanna add buttermilk, not cream to your mushroom soup? Clan council's got to debate it. How's a dwarf not to get balmy? I understand the lad, no two ways about it. Gabor sighed. But I feel it's my duty to remind you that what Marco's going and doing here, well, there are laws. Treasure's due the Elder in Chief, not to Marco. That's one. Second, any dwarf that wants to leave Mahakam can't take nothing but his breeches, his Dixie, and his coat. So, brief like, consider well afore you make your decision, Your Grace. When I was a lass of but twelve summers, my mother ordered me to go to a ball in a pink crinoline dress. In it I resembled a meringue pastry. Neve smiled at the memory. So I cut it into ribbons and fled out my bedroom window. What's that got to do with? What I wish to say, Gabor, is that I understand him. And though it be against your laws, I shall allow him to take the treasure and leave. Mirko Vidmar had tears in his eyes as he thanked the Queen. Then he heaved the crate onto his back, and deeply bent over under its weight, he trudged off towards human lands. Frozen, all. Only the banner moves, blown by the wind. Downright poetic. Prime material for a ballad. Perhaps even a whole saga. The Lyrians rode a narrow, winding path along the rocky ridge. To one side were ice-covered boulders, to the other, a chasm hundreds of feet deep. 
They could have at least erected some barriers, complained Gascon, knocking snow from his cap. Got plans for that, Gabor said. Just need to decide how high to make them. What? Think. Should they be the height of your average dwarf or a human? The debate's gone on for 20 years. On the one hand, you've got... Gabor did not finish his discussion. He was interrupted by the Baba Ghazi that jumped down from the rocks. Archers, shoot! Aim for underbelly! Meave soldiers made quick work of the lone monster. But the sound of battle spooked the horses harnessed to one of her wagons. Whoa there! Whoa, damn it! The driver tried to rein in the animals, but could not. They dragged him into the chasm along with his cart and the soldiers riding in it. They landed a few dozen feet below on a rocky outcropping. A moment later, Barber Ghazis swarmed everywhere. Did you see how they fared? Anyone left alive? Asked Meave, leaning over the cliff edge. Worry more about their cargo, Gascon replied. They were also carrying chests of gold. Blast! We can't get down there. Too steep and the snow keeps falling. We can lower ourselves down a line. But without armor, shields, or heavy weapons, otherwise it will snap. And the Barber Ghazis? The Queen said, brow raised. We shan't kill them with daggers. They're too thick of armor. We'll have to try. Or continue on our way. You only live once. Neve sighed. Gascon, round up some volunteers and let us move out. Moments later, the Queen was lowering herself down a line straight towards the gaping maw of a Barber Ghazi. Her only armor, a woolen shirt. Careful! No one try to be a hero! You mad? Don't shake that! This could hurt! No one try to be a hero! We got a job to do. Bereft of sword and shield, Meave could not withstand a single blow. She thus danced atop the frozen snow, deftly dodging the Barbagazi's lightning-fast strikes, while delivering but a few well-aimed hits of her own, to their eyes, ears, and gaping jaws. When the last monster fell lifeless to the ground, Meave walked up to the shattered wagon. The soldiers it had carried were bruised, frostbitten, but alive. Your Grace, we were sure you'd leave us. A good ruler never abandons her folk. Nor her goal, Gascon interjected, while securing a rope to a chest. Soon enough, all were safely back on the path. The admiration Meave saw in her soldiers' eyes was in itself sufficient reward for her difficult battle.
As you command. Yes, Duan. Welcome to me, En. We've many folk today, but there's always room enough for more. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. We've many folk today, but there's always room enough for more. Fresh snow today. Got a blow before too long. Bring a rush down. Oh, cold as up a shale mar's ass. Braving the snow in those meager courts, are ye? Truly. <laughs> Thought of yourselves here for a spell afore moving on. Snow falls down, snow falls down, teeth are chattering. Winds are howling, frost are beating, la 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 la. Oh, cold as up a shale mar's ass.
We've now witnessed a sorry sight. A mass funeral for miners killed due to a tragic convergence of events. Their lead caskets lay upon the snow, wreaths of hop cones laid upon them in turn. The mourners waited for the diggers to finish. The digging was tough, for the ground was frozen. As the crunch and thud of picks and shovels continued, the dead miners' foreman scrambled onto a boulder to make a speech. Angry shouts and loud booing stopped him. You knew it! You knew they'd smell vapors, but you ordered them to keep digging till it blew up in their faces! Make the daily quota whatever the cost, eh? You blood on your nuts, whore son! A mourner then picked up a chunk of frozen ground and threw it at the former. Blood spurted from the gash that appeared on his forehead. The first dirt chunk was followed by another, then by a rock, a brick. Meave realized that if she did not intervene, the foreman stood to be stoned to death. Something had to be done quickly. Meave saw this clearly. She spurred her mount and rode into the cemetery, pushing through the throng, then stopping before the foreman, the horse shielding him from further blows. Calm yourselves! Silence! His guilt cannot be decided here. It must! Before Meave could finish her plea, a large rock thrown from the crowd struck her bosom, nearly knocking her from her saddle. Upon seeing this, her Lyrian escort lowered spears and drew swords and rushed at the angry mourners. Kino Kren! Isbel cried out. Her hands began to radiate a fierce light that blinded both dwarves and Lyrians alike. Have you lost your minds, all of you, together? Not had your fill of misfortune yet? Lower your arms at once. Whether the power of Isbel's magic or the force of her appeal had the greater effect is difficult to say for certain. Either way, both sides suddenly lost the desire to fight. Meave breathed a sigh of relief, aware that if not for Isbel's intervention, a great amount of blood would have been spilled at that cemetery. Knew there'd be a stink cause of this. Knew there'd be a... Knew there'd be... They are easier they are to target. Thing about slings, they hide well.
The chase is on! No time for that! You sure about that? Greetings. What is it? We must trust each other! I'd hoped we could solve this some other way. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. <laughs> <laughs> 